see and I know, oh, that's why me not gonna let go, oh no, I know that child I live forever. The introduction of the emperor in English. This is His Majesty Nicholas Pele Ferrazzi. I call upon the first delegate of Ethiopia. The speech which you are about to hear will be given in the Amharic language. In the shadows of the press gallery, Italian newspaper men are ready for an outbreak against the emperor whose country their country has taken, waiting for his first words. <laughs> Trying to quell the disturbance, lights turned out. lights out. The disturbers ejected, arrested, and he is able to make his appeal. Haile Selassie continued, and he said this, it is international morality that is at stake. Apart from the kingdom of the Lord, there is not on this earth any nation which is superior to any other. It is us today, it will be you tomorrow. Shalom again, my brothers and sisters. Shabbat Shalom. Send bed salam. Uh, whoa. So let us continue. As we was, as we touched on the first part, that this, uh, these feasts, right? These feasts are Yahweh Eloheinu's feasts. They're not so-called Jewish feasts. That's a very important point of order. That we have to put in order. And we give thanks once again to uh, Educations, the key, Wendem, he out for what he did right here. Just um, noting that he put in Hebrew for Jewish. That's, that's a big step in the right direction. All right now, what the word actually says, right, it says that there are these three feasts, three times in the year. This will explain why the seven blessings, why there are seven blessings in this season to be received. But if you don't know that something is there for you to be received, you might just walk on by it. You might miss out on it. I and I don't want I and I brothers and sisters, nor I and I self to miss out on that barakat to miss out on that blessing. So this Torah portion is named Ha'azinu, which means to give ear. So I ask you, brothers and sisters, to give ear to this. Give ear. In Exodus 23 and 24, let's note this right here. In Exodus, we have Exodus 23, right? We have Exodus 23 and verse 14. Did I say 24? Verse 14. Exodus 23 and 14. In Exodus 23 and 14, it says, three times thou shalt keep a feast to I in the year. Now, to get an overview of the seven feasts in the three seasons, these three times, these three times are these three seasons, these three Moedim. And these Moedim are known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Pesach, Passover. And we can see right here that the First blood moon was connected with Passover, April 15, 2014. Now we're coming up on October 8th, 2014, in the Feast of Tabernacles, right? But here's what Yahweh Eloheinu, here's what he says. He says, here's what our father, right? Here's what our father, the King of Kings, in spirit and truth says, Exodus 23 and 14, three times thou shalt keep a feast. Right? So we keep a feast, keeping his appointment. We're keeping a feast in keeping that appointment during those three appointed times. And here, the Feast of Tabernacles is the third of these three times within the Shana, right? Within the Shana. Now, the blowing of the trumpets, right? The, the previous blowing of the trumpets for 
uh, September, this year, September 24th, it marks the new year, right? A new season. It's that trumpet is, is calling the attention. That's why it says it, it, it might be the first trumpet, might as well be the last. So even in Burhana Selassie's song, if we put it spiritually in context with the glory of His Majesty, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, we will see that. Even this mention on the three feasts, we can show you in the autobiography of His Imperial Majesty where he points out to the Ethiopians, the faithful Ethiopians, these three feasts, right? These feasts, blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Shem, Yahweh Elohe of Shem. Right, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Deuteronomy sixteen sixteen says this right here, brothers and sisters. Sixteen sixteen says three times in a year sh shall all thy males. The Wendemoch had had linked with I and I, and I've been seeking to link with the Wendemoch, the discipleship. Give thanks to uh, Wendemlidge uh, Sawadi and Brother Yifti and Yasson and all others who are cooperating and participating in that discipleship i think that is very very crucial and and we look forward to the upcoming um this uh this ihud this first day eve or what ones in the west will call saturday night right the saturday night but saturday night is actually the eve as this right here is so called friday eve and it's a shabbat so we have to learn um laws and time because the enemy we had left off on how the enemy, right? The enemy has declared war, right? The enemy has declared war. Even if we look around, why is there so much um, challenging of the Bible, of the veracity of the scriptures, right? People even lying, even some who were known to be putting forth some black consciousness are just straight out lying on the scripture. Why is that? Because they don't want to live by this righteousness. This righteousness, our righteousness, in Yeshua HaMoshi, our black Lord and Savior. They'll go after every other so-called false gods out there, right? But but this is our own, right? He came to his own and his own received him not. This is why the word right here is important for us, right? Because we are called, Right? If we chose to answer that call, may we be faithful to what we hear. Azinu, give ear. Deuteronomy 16.16 16 says, Three times in a year, Ashana, shall all thy males. This is the key. Wendemoch. Right? Wind, actually, in the royal Amharic, refers to male. Wind. I like to, you know... um, Look at the etymology. This is this is this is my possible etymology of when dim. We have when, which we know means male, and im as in immi, imma, imma, hiyao, mother of all living. Im means mother, so the male of my mother. Now it's interesting because the first chapter of Proverbs one and eight says here, right here, right the instruction of thy. Abba, of thy Av, of thy father, and forsake not, and leave not the what? The law, get that, the law, the Torah of thy mother. So we say, wend him, right? Wend him, the male of thy mother, the male, my true brother, in the instruction of the father, and the law of the mother. See Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Right. But here in Deuteronomy 16, 16, it says three times in a year shall all thy males, all the males appear before Yahweh thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose. Now, this is a key. Because what is that place? Is it some place over in the east? Is it in the west? Is it a secret place? No, the place is in grace, right? The place is in the name of Yahweh Beshem Yeshua, in the name of he who be who he be, his divine majesty Eloheinu, in the name of the Bain Ha Elohim. I and I, Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Adoni Yeshua, right? In that name, that's the place which he has chosen. 
right? In the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks. And in the Feast of Tabernacles or the in gathering at the end of the year, the in gathering, Sukkot, right? The Sukkah is like the hut, is like the tabernacle, the booths, right? The booths. And here's the key, brothers and sisters. I'm going to get into the details of this right here in Deuteronomy 16 16. And they, speaking of we, the males, right? It says, all thy males. Right, three times in the year. So now compare that with Exodus 23 and 14, the three times. So what are these three times? Passover, right? Or some call it the Easter, but or Fasica, right? Pesach, the Feast of Weeks, right? Shavuot, right? Or the Mekar, the Harvest Feast. And thirdly, the Feast of Tabernacles. So this season is the Feast of Tabernacles season, right? As six months ago, Shavuot was the Pentecost day or Pentecost 50 days after Pesach, 50 days after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. These are the three times and these are not Jewish feasts, right? They are Yahweh's appointed times for his people. Right? And in the old covenant, his people was Israel. His people are still Israel, but in his grace, right, the called out ones, the ecclesia, this is what becomes the church, right? Called out from so-called the, the religious Jewish and black Hebrew establishment, being called out from that, that had turned his back and apostated, right, on the master of the house, on Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? Then we have the righteous from amongst the Goyim, the righteous from among the nations. So there is Israel, the true church, and the righteous Gentiles. So we see Shalosh, we see Selassie, we see that, that threeness in his revealing of himself three times in the year, right? The, the three you know, the three uh, seasons, these three seasons, right? Even though the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we could say was the first part of it. And the Feast of Weeks is basically that season. And in the Feast of Tabernacles begins with the blowing of the trumpet, right? The blowing of the shofar, right? The blowing of the trumpet on Yom Teruah, which is called Rosh Hashanah. Right, Ras Hashanah, or the Ras, the head of the year. Now, between Yom Kippur, which is coming up October 3rd, October 4th, all depends on where in the world you are, you know, according to the particular region of the world you are, but Yom Kippur, right, October 3rd to October 4th, 2014, from sundown, what's called sundown, or when it gets dark. Right to when it gets dark, when the sun is no longer out. We call this the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. Right? Yom Kippur. But the enemy, right? The enemy, Ha Satan, right? And his, and their followers, the, the followers of, of Satan, right? Those who have, have either willingly or have been captured by Satan, the devil, the enemy, right? They are not happy about this. Right? The enemy knows how huh, Satan, their, their father, not our father, but their father knows that he has a short time. Right? He knows that he has a short time, so he has declared war upon the people of Ha Elohim, among, upon the people of Jah, the people of God. Right? The once lost but now found Beta Israel, the redeemed Beta Ethiopian, Hebrew, Israelite tribe, nations declared war on I and I. Yeah. I mean, just look around. Look at all this madness, this chaos that has been happening and increasingly happening. Notice since the first blood moon, April 15, 2014. Is that a coincidence? Not really. You know, they call when people go crazy, they used to call it lunacy. That's what they call a lunacy. But this is a bloody lunacy, right? So we know behind that is the enemy. Behind that is the adversary, right? Because the adversary comes to do what? To steal, to kill, 
and to destroy, but I and I, Adonai, come so that we might have life and life more abundantly, right? Both in this world, but especially in the world in the age to come. So this is a preparation time. These appointments, it's important for us to keep the appointment with I and I, Heavenly Ab, with I and I, Father, in the Moshia, in Yeshua, right? In grace and in truth. So these three times in the year, Moses was told to command the Israelites, right, that all the males were to appear before Yahweh thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Make sure we get that right there in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is Pesach or Passover. And bring this on again. Right of Passover in the Feast of Weeks. Now, when we look at the Israelites in the wilderness, it's a very, very interesting my comparison that we'll like to compare and contrast. So let's do this right here. Let's see if we can move this right here and we're going to compare and contrast. Okay, we'll hold that right there and we'll move this so we can see the Israelites. Right, the Israelites, right, from actual art and facts. So we see the Israelites right there, right? Now it's interesting, the Israelites, right, they were commanded to keep the Pesach, right, to the, the lamb, right, the, the lamb on the blood, on, on the blood on the doorpost of the house. And they had to come out, right, they came out, he delivered them and guided them out of Egypt. And the whole Egypt connection and the background of what's going on this time is just amazingly interesting, right? Between the so-called Egyptians, uh, Hotep niggas coming up against the Beta Israel. And it doesn't really matter what camp, right? See, some will say, oh, well, they believe like this. The enemy is trying all sorts of divide and conquer brothers and sisters so we have to know well what is the season and what is the reason right for the season so the israelites came out and 50 days later they went to sinai right and said sinai that the torah that the law right was given to israel at sinai at sina let's see if we have that right here right okay here we go right here all right Okay, yeah, we have that right there, all right? So this is connection with the blood moons right there, the ark, right? Let's see if we have the ark standalone image out of Egypt, right? We see these connections right here, delivered I and I out of Egypt, right? And let's move this over here. So the connection with these blood moons, right? And gave to Israel the Torah, right? Now, it's interesting when we compare the first Pentecost, which was in the wilderness, right? With the latter Pentecost, right? Or in the New Covenant, right? Where in the first Pentecost, because of the sin, Right, the disobedience, the sin of the golden calf. You recall that the sin of the golden calf. Right, nearly what was about three thousand died. Right, because they went backward and not forward. They went backward. Right, to worship the false gods. Right, the false gods of Egyptology, just like a lot of these Hotep niggas are doing today. Right. And, and, and why don't someone to come to this truth of who we be, right? It's because of the responsibility, right? The responsibility. They won't be able to be living, right, those evil lives. Why don't one come to the light? Because they don't want their dirty deeds to be exposed. And no doubt they take pleasure, right? They take pleasure in unrighteousness, 
right? I, I mean, that's some people's choice. Well, if that be their choice, brothers and sisters and mothers, may that not be our choice. May we make our wills obedient to his good influence. And his good influence is made known to us in and through our Adoni, Adonenu, Yeshua, HaMoshiach. Amen. Then we have the Feast of Tabernacles. And this year, the Feast of Tabernacles, October 3rd to the 4th, 2014, is I and I appointment. Brothers and sisters, may we keep that appointment. Now, on the on, on the three fe feasts, if you want to look this up so you can study this for yourself within the scripture, there are three places that we have this spoken of from the scriptures. Deuteronomy 16.16 16 is the first. Right, Deuteronomy sixteen sixteen, then we have Exodus twenty three fourteen, then we have uh, Second Chronicles eight thirteen. Right, eight and thirteen. Amen. Amen. Right, and the feast of um, tabernacles in this season, known as the feast of tabernacles, the third time. Right, has three particular. Um, three particular days. The first is the Yom Kippur and the blowing of the trumpet, right? The blowing of that ram's horn, the blowing of the trumpet to announce the season, right? Then there are 10 days and we're still in this period of these 10 days. So in just a few days, we're about to experience a change of seasons, but it's going to be a change of seasons in more ways than one. Right, especially for those who have faith in Abba Father in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right, we will be changing seasons. The enemy HaSatan knows this. Right, he knows that we're going to be changing seasons. Now, in First Chronicles twelve thirty two, we find that there were the the men of the tribe of Yisachar of Isachar or Yisachar. Right. And it says that these were men that had understanding, right, understanding of the times, right, to know what Israel ought to do. What should Israel do in this season? What should what should black Israel, if you please, do ought to do in this season? Go check that out first. The Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, where we find of the tribe of Yisachar, right? Today's Yisachar will relate to the Afro-Mexicano, right? Those of our brothers, according to, according to the flesh, right? These are the men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel, what I and I as Israel, what? Ought Israel do, right? What must we do in this time and in this season? What must we do knowing that Jah has three important days, three important times, right? Three important times, namely the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. What must I and I as Israel do in this special, in this extraordinary season? What must Israel do when we recognize what we are going through? We as the redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites, something is going on. The enemy has declared war. Right against Jah's people. So, what must Israel do? What must we do, both individually and corporately, as the body of Ha Moshiach? What must Israel do? Just 